We set up a time to meet prior to when we start. When you show up three minutes before you start, I was here. I was trying to get this thing situated. It sucks. I show up typically an hour before the show. Yeah, tell the people why their time is invaluable. It's that time again, that time of the week, same time every up. week. I screwed that up. I hit the button too fast. That's okay, Chris. Sorry. Okay, go Welcome back. Welcome, everybody, your... to the HVAC Overtime podcast, YouTube, live stream, whatever. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where he's going with that. I feel like there's something missing from the show right now. Like It's, it's awkward without Adam here. Oh, Adam's awkward. not here. Well, somebody's missing, yeah. I feel like it's more awkward with Adam here. No, I feel like it's awkward without Adam here. Like, I don't know. I because because I had plans to talk to him about some stuff, and like I've been thinking about it throughout the day, and I was like, Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about this and we're gonna yeah. talk about that. And then like five minutes before the show, he said, Oh man, I'm not gonna make it. Yeah, and why yeah, did he, why is he not here, guys? Why because is he not here? He is prioritizing the most important thing in his life his family bullshit is what it is <laughs> hey that's what i've been it doing is. every time i miss the show it's because i'm prioritizing my family bullshit good for him you know what two days ago i was trying to convince him to get a divorce i'm like dude you just just do it dump your family off at the fire station and just fucking move to Mi michigan i got you bro oh yeah and then today it's like i love him so much i'm like ugh. Um, yeah, I don't Sick. think that we talk about that. That's weird. You, Chip, you're, buddy. You're, you're awesome. What are we talking about? Button delay contribution? There we go. Button Oops. delay contribution. Okay, cool. Thank oh, you for that. Yes. Super I, chat. Got, I got you. Yeah, because I hit the button the wrong way. See, that's when Adam's not here, that's where I mess things up. Like, I'm just like, I don't I don't know how to do this stuff. Yes. Could you imagine? He, um, Edgar just gave me an idea. Imagine if he wasn't on here and he was at school's podcast. Well, let's let's go ahead and discuss that. Adam, <laughs> oh, new, good idea. Adam that's has a, new priorities in life. That's a very yeah. good point, Chris. And and we are not a priority yeah. anymore. That's a very good point. You know what? I bet was on a podcast, eh? You know what? I bet he's never said to Brian or in the HVAC school, I'm like, hey guys, I'm having funky feelings about my family tonight. You mind if I skip this one? Mm -hmm. Nope. 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 nope, because Brian would be like, "What are you? What are you gay?" And Dad yeah, would be like, "I don't no. know." Yeah, I yeah, it. I don't think he would say that, but he you know, would totally say that. Have you Have you guys seen the freaking swimming pool outdoor patio thing that Brian's building at his house? It's insane. No, dude. I haven't seen that. It, his His wife posts stuff all the time. It's Maybe I did see dude. that. It is beautiful. Like what? I, I, I think I did see that, but I thought they were honestly at a resort or something. I don't. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I need to get me some of that backyard madness going on. But hey, real quick, before we get into the thick of things, we got Will, Spe Will Speed in the chat. I think he's yo. back from Peru. Oh, Cyborg cool. Sheep, what's up? Again, you greasy-haired bastard. Yep. Leon Leon, Liza Raga Edgar, he will be here all night stating obvious things for us. What's up, Hambone? Gary Gleisberg, Chipmunk. Uh, oh, yeah, Randy Ravioli. I say hi to him every single week. And you know what? He's never in the chat. Speaking of NorCal Dave, Sequest said that Adam's probably in NorCal stream. Dave was going live. He goes live around 5 and streams till usually 6 or something like that. Well, I guess for those of you that are whatever, Pacific time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 6.09 here. But um, I was in Dave's stream talking in the chat and stuff. We need to have Dave on. Why haven't we had Dave on yet? 
I don't know. We just can't seem to make it happen for some reason. I don't know him. Yeah. So. Yeah, we need to have him on for sure. So let's do it. You talk to him once in a while. Yeah, I can message yeah, let's him. Do it. I think I've asked him before. I just don't think we ever made it happen, like you said. Put the bug so. in his ear. He's kind of like. I mean, I know they're not the same, but he's like, um, like a Nathan Orr almost, but in a different way. Yeah. yeah. Like. You know, a skater, punk rocker type of Nathan Orr kind of esque I guess, personality. Yeah. Find, that's almost like Chris in the future, maybe. Me in the future? Yeah. You think I'm going to become laid back and relaxed? Uh, and... Yeah, I still no. skateboarding. I still skateboard. My neighbors, I, I realized the other day People I walked to the mailbox because we, right. we have a community mailbox and I walked up to the mailbox and there's like an older lady living in someone's house. I think she's like a grandma or something like that. And she said something to me from across the street. And I was like, what? I didn't understand. And she's like really old. So I just kind of kept walking. Mm -hmm. And then I realized she asked where my skateboard was. And I was like, oh, because oh, wow. I ride my skateboard around this, the neighborhood all the time. Like like recently, <laughs> like within the last year, you've rode a skateboard around? Dude, I ride my skateboard every day. You don't do that. You're going to really? kill yourself. There's so much that you guys don't know about me. If I literally ride pebble, my skateboard around my neighborhood. Your bones will just day. turn to dust. Like, don't yeah. do that. So Dude, my must office, be strong, maybe. Your family depends on you. My office is uh, is the house behind me. We, we basically run our business out of a house. So we have a house behind us that we bought that is our office. So and I ride my skateboard to and from the office, like in the morning That's and awesome. in my work clothes and everything. Like wow. I, ride my skateboard, dude. I am scared for you, Chris. Why? Bill is dude, scared when I walk on the road. Dude, dude. Okay. I, two two stories. Story number one. I used to take my daughter to the roller skating rink and I used to roller skate with her. I'm not that great, but I can hold my own and just go and, you know, go in the circles. Like I don't, I can go kind of fast, you know, and I, I used to roller skate a lot when I was a kid. And, uh, on the third or fourth trip to the roller skating rink, I remember I was coming off the, the roller skating wood part, you know, in the transition. And I hit the carpet and I just like, boop, right on my back, dude. Like just flat right on my back. You're, you're like, talking to the guy that went to a roller skating rink for his 40th. Come on, dude. Like that's, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. It's like you got a death. Simon just said it. Chris is a hip boss riding a skateboard to work. I know I can't. I can't. It's, you might as well just awesome. be like Coke and fentanyl and just kind of see and just like, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be amazing. No, and then the other thing, so yeah, Chris walking on roof edges, dude, like I don't think he's ever put this in an actual video or a short or released it to the public in any way, but Chris will show us in our super secret private best friend chat. He'll make these videos of him like, walking along the edge of these buildings now these buildings are like what 25 30 foot tall i mean yeah they're not they're that not tall. skyscrapers but you're not gonna it, die you're just gonna I mean, break your arm you could die you really could die well if you dive off head first imagine yeah, one day bill we see a video die. of short yeah. sorry chris like grinding a, a roof curb or the bottom of the metal on mm -hmm. the uh, siding Check it out, guys, with a skateboard on a roof. I'm like, not. No, no, no. Let me. Let me I, okay, so one thing I can't do is I can't ever take credit for things that I don't do. I am not a skateboarder that does, does tricks tricks. and shit like that. I just cruise on a longboard up and down the street, relaxing, See, carving. Exactly. exactly. Like stuff. Clive said, it's still splatter height. Yeah. So all it takes is one little false or one little failed move. You slip, you twist your ankle, you fall. And the next thing you know, we got vegetable Chris hosting the show with us and your wife's feeding you pea soup while we're trying to talk to you. So Brian Sanders yeah. says next purchase is a segue. It's funny. He says that because oh, no. I literally had this thought today as I was watching some other guy's YouTube video, when he gets up onto a warehouse and he has to walk a mile across, I thought, man, if I had to do warehouse work, I would totally have a one wheel and I'd take it up on the roof with me and ride the electric one wheel across the freaking roof. 100%. No, don't do that. Wow. Just walk it. You need the exercise, man. Like you need to you need to get your legs a moving, your back strong, your core. Dude, you know how much exercise I get when I Well, on a one wheel you're not going to get any, but on a skateboard no. I get a crap ton of exercise, dude. So I don't know. I don't Those are pretty cool. That. We see, actually look, there's a couple of people here that have them, but like you know the people that have them. It seems like I see the same guy on it, the one dude, wheel. Dude, one wheels. I I've always wanted one, but I don't have eight hundred dollars to drop on a freaking mm. skateboard. Like I just can't justify what, that. What's this so. one wheel thing? Is that the kind of looks like a modified unicycle? 
So no, it's got one, one fat wheel in the middle, yeah. and it has two oh, skateboard okay. hands on yeah, each side. Yeah, and yeah. You could literally step on the wheel, and then your leg will get sucked underneath, and you'll die. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> I think that's they make a. I think right the original the one. The original one, the tire was just in the middle, and you didn't want to let your legs touch it. But I think they have like a. a yeah, I see a shield. Oh, like a dome now. Yeah. So you yeah. were telling me. I think it was you, Chris, who, who was telling me. How does it go and come back? There's is something in your hand or something. No, the one wheel, it's, lean, it's right? an accelerometer. You just lean oh, just, and it goes oh, forward wow. or backwards. That's yeah. yeah. So, I just watched a video recently of like a, a toddler that jumped on one. And this toddler had like perfect balance and they were riding it around the house and it was a trip. Wow. I do not have perfect balance. No. Uh, sideboard, no. Do you have a unicycle or do you have one of those one wheel electric ones? He's saying Segway one. Oh, a Segway no. one. Okay, my bad. That's so nice. Cool. But yeah, no. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that the other day when I was uh, riding my skateboard. And then there was something else that I was doing. And I was like, there's so much that you guys don't know about me that like there's certain things that I don't know. We just never bring it up because I'm not one to gloat. So there's certain yeah. things that you don't. I don't know. We've just never talked about. And I'm like, shit. Yeah, that is funny. Like I do. There's a lot of shit that you guys don't know. Man, you know what? I just I got to tell you, Joe, you look incredible in that sweater, by the way. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate Absolutely it. incredible. Thank you. Oh, so I got this mystery package. Oh, yeah. House. Quick backstory. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm having a kid. Well, actually, my wife's doing most of the work, but I'm participating in <laughs> some participated, small way. Yeah, you know? in some small way, you know, for like 11 <laughs> seconds. You contributed some DNA. So I did. I mean, I got a hand workout, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And uh, so she's going to pop a baby out in June. What's up, Kevin? And uh, I told these guys, I, I just kind of invited them to the baby shower, knowing full well, like, you know, you can't come to the baby shower. They, you know, we're a million miles away. Um, but these yahoos got together and sent me like a bunch of amazing baby stuff, like tons of just That's baby stuff. stuff, like really just all out, took a lot of the burden off me and my family, like really, really appreciate it to the point where words can almost not convey our I'm gratitude. surprised when I asked you if you had a baby registry. I was like, do you got a baby registry? Yeah, and Chris I didn't think it. you were going to send me the link, but you did. So I was like, all right, it's on like Donkey Kong. Yeah, my my wife made that up and she's like, here, send him this. I'm like, okay. I was confused too because the name and then like I don't think it, I don't know the address. Something was weird about it and I was like, well, hopefully this is the right one because I just <laughs> sent a bunch letter, of shit. Letter so. it, bud. Yep. And so uh, my wife wanted to send these like thank you things or whatever. And she's like, look in and she's like, let's get this box of chocolates with like this. And, and she's like, how about we get them custom mugs and this? And I'm like, no, that's all stupid. Those are all stupid ideas. All your ideas are stupid. And I was like, let me come up with something. And so I sent Chris and Adam. I would send Joe one, but he doesn't tell me where he lives. But I sent them a super special gift. So it says you'll never guess what's inside. And then when you open it up, it says, yes. Someone decided to send you a potato, potatoparcel.com. And it's amazing. Potato is got a picture of Bill and his family. And then on the other side, it says words can express our gratitude, but this potato can. Now, when I got this, I told my wife, I think this is the best gag gift ever. Mm -hmm. Like it's thoughtful. It's creative. And my wife goes, I don't know about best. She goes more like stupid. And I'm like, you, that's you, right. I thought this was hilarious. And she's that's like, a great idea. Dumb. And I'm like, no, this is perfect. Like, this is a great gift. I would want to send these to people that I know. Like you could, you could cut it in half and like make more potatoes. Yes. It is a real potato Clive. I genuinely thought about planting this in my garden and then I would have a potato plant from bill i wonder if like the other donated potatoes. his dna over here too but with a potato i wonder if the other potatoes would grow my picture on them that's a good question we were actually discussing this before the show uh hamilton uh they're talking about the uh printed the stuff printed on the potato i guess how yeah, they so, did it so you know i'm what? thinking that like they use some sort of a thermal printer because it's at first i thought it was a stamp Nicholas? but it's not because it's going in the groove right here like there's a groove and it's, it's the, perfectly is, on the, there. is the picture like just a sticker piece of yeah, paper? Yeah, the picture is a piece of paper that's stuck to it. Oh, see, I thought so. they were like screen painted that on or. But yeah, it's a real potato. Um, hundred percent, coolest gift ever. That's amazing. Yeah, a true Russell potato. That is right. 
hundred yeah. percent. And let so, me tell uh, you, like those aren't cheap. Like it's just I looked it up. They're not. No, <laughs> you were like, saying they were on tra- Dragon's Den. Like forty bucks. Like yeah. I invested in the company. Yeah, it was on Shark Tank. The uh, yeah. sorry, the, the what Kevin did you say, guy Joe? there. Dragon's Den. What is Dragon's Den? Are you watching like Dragon Ball Z or something? No, I think it's the same thing. Are you like an anime person that watches Dragon? the weird? No, anime no, no. Thing? Dragon's Den, I think, is the Canadian version, or they're another version, like different. I know there's one sure. called Bank Tank. Are you guys too cool to have like American TV shows? You have to have yeah. your own fake Canadian TV I, I, shows. I think it's the same people, honestly. Do you guys I have like Survivor, mean. but it's like just in like the CN Tower or something like that? Yeah, maybe. with like oh, you know what, chat, maybe help me, guys. I'm pretty sure it's Dragon's Den and Shark Tank. Yeah, Let me Kevin, know. Kevin, yeah, Dragon's Den is Shark Tank in Canada. Is, uh, yes, Dragon's oh. Den is Shark Tank in Canada. Yeah, yeah. so which Kevin that. Hart, you have to learn how to take better pictures, bro. Your pictures they make you just look like a serial killer. Like, <laughs> all his profile picture. yeah, all of his profile. Look at that picture right there in his little avatar. Like, I wouldn't get an Uber with that guy. Oh my god! Like, look at that! I, I got to hang out and have a, a drink with Kevin at uh, in Florida. I'm surprised I didn't get to you survived for as long as I wanted with your to. Liver. Cool dude. So I'm just joking. Did you Kevin, guys cool see guy. on social media uh, that Technology Connections did a video on sizing of uh, heat pumps? Nope. nope. Okay, so Technology Connections is a YouTube channel. Really cool dude. I, forgive me, someone in the chat, tell me what his name is. But I've had communications with him. He's a really nice guy. He makes some really good videos. Now, he's not an HVAC service technician. He's just a very inquisitive person that does a lot of research. And he yeah. backwards calculated his heat load at his house by figuring out using his Nest thermostat and the run times and oh, looking cool. at the run time over a series of, you know, months or whatever and then backwards calculated and then basically came up with this amazing video where he does like borderline pretty damn good with his terminology and everything and his Mm -hmm. reasoning and logic as to why his what did he say he has a two ton i think heat pump in his like little condo in chicago and he's like it's oversized oh wow now has he so he backwards calculated a load for this heat pump has he had anybody come in with like a blower door and like confirm no not yet and actually he doesn't have a heat pump he has a gas furnace now that i think he said he has a two or three ton air conditioner and then a sixty thousand btu furnace is what he said actually and uh yeah he he basically backwards calculated and and figured it out and then he went as far as buying a bunch of space heaters and then plugging them in and then paying attention to the energy consumption to see mm-hmm. if, if that would like, heat his house. Sounds like uh, they know him in the UK there. Chip yeah, Monk. a lot of people watch his Think stuff. He's technical too, like you said, right? So he kind of like, probably... Have you seen any of his other videos? What kind of yeah. uh, content he... He does create? all kinds of technology content, dude. He, huh. he's, he, you know, very similar. You know how Clive tears things down and yeah. he has that personality? Yeah. Yep. The, the the guy from technology connections he he has a very interesting unique personality in the way that he talks and i don't know he's just it's really easy to watch his stuff i watch his stuff quite often um jason, uh, alex, alex what is is what his name is clive said so yeah no cool what's up jason what's up, jason i got so to cool. hang out we with can, jason too in we florida can see their faces now from facebook and streamers as long as they approve yeah. Streamyard, yeah so if you guys are on facebook you need to approve Facebook for StreamYard or something like that. Cause like we can see Jason's picture and profile name, but most of the time we just see Facebook users. We don't know who it is. Oh, and real quick for any of you guys, I'm sure there's nobody in the chat right now that doesn't know who Mr. Big Clive is. Bigclive.com right up there. He does a live stream every Saturday. It's four o'clock my time. Uh, I don't know what time it is everywhere else in the world, but your YouTube will tell you whatever time it's, it's coming on. But, uh, He does some great stuff too. Um, and the thing, the thing that uh, subscribe, He's got I like about subscribers. Uh, Alec with technology connections, just like Clive said too. Um, he has two channels, but the cool thing is, is that his main channel, he he kind of does like fuck you to YouTube because his main channel hmm. he puts the long videos on, and then he puts the short, like he does like oh. a short condensed version on his second channel. Like he prioritizes cool. what's important, you know, instead of like it's catering to the meal. algorithm double dipping nice i am in the uh eastern standard time yeah but no that was pretty cool and um it was oh, a... every second saturday now oh, that's your patron 
Oh, okay. Oh. Interesting. So wait, you know, every second Saturday? Mm-hmm. Unless you're one of his patrons. Not the first Saturday, but the second one. Got it. And then the following the fourth one. And then and the, the sixth one. one. And then the eighth one. I got one of these. As guys... content creators, what I've started to do too is I've like, you know what? I'm not going to, I don't stress as much about uploading. Like uh, there's sometimes mm-hmm. that I miss and stuff, but I've just gotten into that mode where it's like, you know what? I'm not going to freaking stress for stupid crap anymore. It's just like, I hey. mean, a long time ago before I gave up on it. And I know you've given this advice to other people too, Chris, but because uh, I started in the YouTube world because of Chris and I emailed him originally, asked him to look at my videos, like asked him for advice. And I remember him telling me at some point in time during those conversations, he's like, just don't worry about it so much. Just stop yeah, caring. Yeah. And I know he's he's given that advice to other people as well. I mean, it's, it's the worst advice when someone says, how do you get a YouTube channel? How do you grow it? And I was like, just stop trying. That's just, exactly just right, though. Be like, yourself. I feel like there are people who can like manipulate the system. They'll send out videos, see what kind of clicks, see what's popular. Then they'll just kind of go off of that and expand on that idea. Uh, but I think for the most part, a lot of people that are that really make it big, they just get, I don't want to say lucky, but they just kind of hit it, you know, like. Yeah, well, the thing is, is that this is my my perspective, right? Is that first off, I know that my content isn't going to last forever. I know that my channel isn't going to be watched for hundreds of years. Like there, it's it's got a shelf life, I think five to 10 years. So I think I'm right at the end of the shelf life of my channel. But Oh, it's that's okay. so dis- so depressing, man. I think you yeah. got a long time to go. I mean, I'll keep putting stuff up, but I I think the peak, I think it's peaked, and I think no, it's kind of like I don't. But, I think it's I think it's plateaued, but it's it'll come back. Like, one but the the point that I'm trying to make is is if you know you, if you want to try and you want to grind and you really want to push it, you can grow your channel. You can you can follow YouTube's best mm. practices. You could do everything you want, and that's fine. That's that's great. But if you want to have a down to earth channel you know, where people realize that you're a real person, like just be yourself. And if people like you, they like you. If they don't, they don't like just, it is what it is. You know, that's the way I see it. So I agree. Okay, let's, uh, but that's just answer me. this. And then we'll, I'll show you. And what then I, I have text stopped stuff. making YouTube videos altogether. Yeah. Yeah. I made one a while back and it didn't go over so well. No. So, yeah, no, we're no. not going to talk about that, though, are we? No, we can't. I signed oh, a, gotcha. I signed a non-disclosure about that whole situation. Got it. So, yeah, let's not do that. Yeah, poo-poo <laughs> on that idea. Yeah. Um, I wanted was... to ask your guys' yeah. question because I did a package unit install this week. And, you know, when I do package unit installs, I don't do a lot of gas heat work. Like, obviously, I'll install a package unit, but we don't work on heaters as much. You know, I probably worked mm-hmm. on like three or four this whole winter. Hey, that was it. But my question is, I struggle because I don't have a threader and I have to mm-hmm. go buy, you know, pre-made fittings and nipples and all that stuff. So I end up with a bunch of couplings and it's just... Yeah. A pain in are you allowed to use the uh what's it called uh csst or c i have used that and yes i can use that um what i find is that so that's the corrugated stainless steel tubing whatever stuff is flexible but what i find about that is the 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 coating on it only lasts about two years then the coating comes off and it starts Mm. to look like crap so i prefer going back with black iron yeah i like i like the look of just nice clean black iron going there too i have in the past like when i've been on certain job sites used threaders and i mean it's it's a game changer but the threaders that i used are on the ground i'm not lugging all that stuff onto the roof you know says a a mega press that's what we're going to uh that's what i'm yeah that's what i was kind of getting at like has anybody in the chat used Megapress? Do you like it? So here's a dumb question. I've never it. used a Megapress, but like with the Megapress, I know you have, I've seen the fittings for the Megapress, but like, are you just using like, you just cut regular black pipe? Yeah. Like yeah. Look at my it? video. I did a video on it, guys. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so John. I asking. forget I'm you even make videos. You make them like, yeah. so I know. It's going to come to me. Yeah. yeah. I did a video. Like, it's, it's great. Like Michael saying, it's, and I was telling Chris to save so much. Imagine doing that rooftop, Chris. Your end of the time, your gas is the last thing you're doing, probably. Yeah, you and it took me two hours. Yeah. Two hours to do oh, yeah. freaking. So, that would have done a fifteen minutes. Of, you know, yeah. Fifteen. So minutes with the mega press, when you like, how do you cut the black pipe? Porter Just band. Cut it. Yeah, but yeah, I would personally use. I have a big ass bandsaw. I would yeah. take yeah. the big ass bandsaw. Band so you, you cut it. On it. 
And then do you have to like, how do you clean it? Like, what's the procedure for cleaning? Do you have is to sand like a it down? Or... Inside and the outside, rough it up a little bit. Just just a little bit. Okay. And that's is, there, is there a fitting for the drill or something like that? Or no? You know what, just you I, have, like I have a rigid handheld. Okay. Just okay. Make, it, it reams out the inside and the outside a bit. And that's and it. Then, so there's nothing like um you know like the the um I don't remember how to say the Victalic fittings. That sounds you know those. I don't know. They, uh, uh, they're used in like uh, I don't know big giant water lines like in uh, yeah. industrial uh, settings. Yeah. Okay. They're orange, you know, and they it's all black pipe. But I know with those, there's a groove that has to be cut in the pipe. No. Nope. Like you, you cut it flesh or. From, the, at the end of it, and then there's a groove that has to be cut in the end of it. And then yeah, you know, I know. Now that race that I know your time with Vitalik. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Now, Joe, which press do you have? You have the, the same one as me. Yeah. You have the M12 12. or the M18? Yeah. The 12. Okay. So one inch you, iron. Exactly. Okay. So that's because that's what I read. My M12 that I have, the Milwaukee M12, can do up to one inch, which I don't yeah. ever work on gas over one inch. So no, you won't. Not a rooftop unit. But what is won't. uh? What's the rough? I know in Canadian speak, it's probably 10,000 rupees more or whatever, but what does it cost you for the jaws rubles. for the mega press? They're expensive. I, uh, they're like, is it like 50 rubles or, or 50 rubies? Like, like, what's like, this guy talking yeah. about? Leader? Loonies and is it euros? Uh, like, I don't know what kind of money I think it'll cost you guys. I'm going to guess 500 American. Okay. How okay. Many, uh, like how many so, out of curiosity, what is 500 has? American in like rubles? Or I'm going to say or like 700 Canadian. Ten, Holy oh, crap! Wow. Yeah, they're expensive. Everything's expensive, dude. That's the you know you how can is get our it, money worth more cool. than your it's money. I don't understand that. It won't be for long. Don't worry. I know. I don't understand how it is now. We're printing it like crazy, dude. The no value kidding. of our dollars going down every day because it's killing me. It's that's what I don't understand. Yeah, killing me. No, it's it's going down. So, um, where do you get your fittings from? I know you guys, Tim Hortons or what. Like, no, not Tim Hortons. Just uh, dude, okay. that would be so awesome if Tim Hortons got into like the HVAC <laughs> supply house game. Like you pull through, you get some donuts, a coffee, some mega press fittings. Like, boom, that is yeah, a golden yeah, idea. Is, uh, ferocious where we are as well. It's just like California is and New York, and Chicago. Um, but like, cause like I don't think Home Depot has like mega press fittings. Nope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, and that's the problem, with, like, man. I I I gotta actually go to a plumbing supply to get them. I wonder if you can order we don't, it from supply. We'll I mean, because it's not plumbing here, but uh, we no, get them no. as just tool supplies or a supply oh, house. Okay. But usually it's not like a tool supply. What supplier. do the fittings cost? Oh, they're pretty expensive too, but they've gone down a bit now. Dude, they I took back. <clears throat> you guys ever uh you guys ever do the mass returns to Home Depot? I cleaned out my mm-hmm. van like two months ago and I had two giant buckets of stuff that I was like, I need to take that back to Home Depot. I took it back today. It was like six hundred dollars worth of crap that I took back oh, wow. that's just been sitting in there. And, uh, you know, when, when I buy stuff half the time, I don't pay attention. So they were returning like some pro press fittings, like for a seven eights oh. pro press 90 is like $9. I'm like, Holy yeah. crap. Or yeah, whatever. Just sitting around your truck yeah. or your garage, but, but they have those at home Depot Vega fittings. Oh yeah. Yeah. Pro press. Yeah. They, they have, so um, pro press you can get, pro pressing, you can uh, get CSST uh, piping, um, from, from home Depot. You can get you black iron. Home I get Depot? all that stuff from Unity? home Depot. Maybe that's good that we don't we can't get Vega fittings here. I'm glad they don't have them at the Home Depot. I'm glad they have oh, them with the suppliers. Good. I just realized that. Wow. Uh, yeah, we have Ferguson, um, and I do have an account at Ferguson because they Ferguson owns Air Cold Supply, which is an air conditioning supply house too. So technically, I can go buy from Ferguson. I just mm-hmm. don't shop there, so hmm. it's, it's it's just a different place. They were asking in the chat, but. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get the mega press because, dude, after doing this AC, I'm like, this is just stupid. Now watch, I. But the problem is, I don't sell ACs very often, so I'm gonna go buy it and then I'm not gonna use it for however long, you know. Yeah, like, but I mean, you only have to use it a couple times; it'll pay for itself. True. I mean, yeah. You, you can use it for water too. Charge same, up same tool for it. Different jaw. I still use like I didn't think I was gonna want the Pro Press, right? But I had the Zoomlock Max jaws, and I was like, I better get a Pro Press anyways. So I got pro press jaws or whatever jaws you want to call it, just the Milwaukee tool. And okay. I use the the um, pro press fittings on ice machine drains because that when I do ice machine installs, it's usually a double ice cool. machine setup and the drains mm-hmm. take me the longest. Usually it takes me like two hours to do the drains because they're all intricate where I pipe them. Right. And now I just do them in press and it's so right. fast. Right. So fast. Yes. Dude, speaking of tools like the train and all that stuff and end yeah. of a job this is that. this isn't that cool but i've used a multi-tool 
like one of the Milwaukee multi tools mm -hmm. for the very first time today. Really? It's like, because I've always just used my angle grinder, my Metabo or Sawzall or something. And uh, one of the other guys, he had a, had one of these multi tools. I'm like, let me try that thing. It is like butter. I had to cut a, I had to cut a big square out of a, a VAV fan box to get to the motor today. And just oh, nice. That's a good idea, Bill. That's right idea. through like butter. Just bzz, bzz, oh, yeah. man, this thing is smooth. No sparks. I mean, there's you know, metal flakes and shavings and shit, but nice clean yeah, cut. Dude. You're you're about right, Joe, because uh, our 134 a hole wow. says uh, 916 at Granger's, but Granger's steps on their stuff like crazy. So yeah, I bet you I can get it somewhere else for 500 for sure. So yeah. Granger's yeah. is like ridiculously yeah. expensive, but yeah. they have everything. That's the thing. So, and you know, one thing that I, uh, cause I was just talking to a guy the other day from one of the big parts distribution places. And he was asking me like, you know, where I get air conditioning parts and all these different things. And a lot of people will bring it up and ask me in my videos too. I'm fortunate enough that I live in a very, very urban area and we have distribution centers for every major supply house here. So mm. I have yeah, the West coast distribution center for United refrigeration. I can get any compressor. Cool. 15 minutes from my house and they have a giant warehouse bigger than what you guys know because it's the entire distribution center same thing grangers i've got their distribution center so wow. when i say they have everything yeah, i can right. have you know all that yeah, see, I don't know because if, i live so close to all those places i don't know if i live next to the distribution centers but i definitely have branches of like united Federation yeah. and like york and lennox like they all i genuinely hour hate, where I'm at. i absolutely despise united refrigeration I just do not like the supply houses, but the fact that I have the West Coast Distribution Center, I go there when I need something because it's just they have it, you know. Mm. But I don't. They're my third bottom of the list supply house because I prefer not to go to them. They just here they're usually on the smaller scale, like just the like size wise. But yeah, they are handy for refrigeration, so I have to admit they usually have yeah what you're looking for. Yeah, they yeah. usually do. Um, it's just a pain, dude. I, what I appreciate, United was the first one to have a real website, so I didn't have to call mm. and talk to people anymore. So I could just look on the website, parts. and I find parts yeah. and stuff, and then I'll go to the supply house and be like, "I need this. We don't have it. Yeah, you do. It's in the warehouse. Go get it." You know. So, man, this one of these companies I was with, we always used to buy our filters from Granger. Yeah. Well, oh. like, they probably like, had well because grangers will give you really good pricing if they, you're a good customer of theirs i don't think i ever saw the pricing but i was like i just know everything else at grangers is, is marked quite high yeah if 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 depending on the 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 company if you're a big company grangers will make exclusive mm. deals with people and they uh, will give close that because i mean you got to think they're a huge supply house across the country so they can give you good pricing um hvacbl says commercial aircon unit with supply fan attached became noisy when belt changed and greased i mean you, you've got something going on there dude uh some sort of issue it for for it to become noisy when the belt was changed well maybe you tightened it up and you have a bearing yeah. going bad or did you over grease the bearing because 99 percent of people over grease bearings you really yeah, only right. need one squirt that's it you don't ever fill it up Dude, I, I squirt it till it mushrooms out of the bearing yeah. itself. That's yeah. how you, you know. Blow the seal out, and then a, you know. I remember a long, long time ago, a guy used to tell me is, uh, and I stuck by it. Grease it while it's running, so you uh -huh. can hear the difference. You know what I mean? Mm. And uh, a stethoscope is. I've used them. They're they're handy a to have. Stethoscope yeah. for what? Yeah, they're cheap. Put it on the yeah. bearing. Um, first of all, isolate it. See if it's the, the take the belt off. Run the motor. See yes. if the noise is there without the belt. See if the motor's fine, and then you could isolate it. Well, you know, I'll out myself a little bit. I changed a, a belt on an exhaust fan a couple weeks ago, and it was just there doing a PM. I popped it off. You know, I did the whole thing where you just spin it off. You know, it's not good for the belt. I understand. And I put the new one on, and when I started it back up, it was very, very loud. Like very, very loud. And it was because the um, the new belt was obviously smaller, it was tighter, and it was somehow pushing the shaft so the, the fan was actually kicked out and grinding on the inside of the exhaust cabinet, whatever you want to uh -huh. call it. So, I don't know. Um, and I, I feel like if I stuck a screwdriver in my ear to listen to a bearing, that would hurt just mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, it travels. I forget the term, but it travels like a, some people use like a long rod or some, and something long. So you stick a uh, screwdriver in your ear? It's like using like a you using it like a stethoscope. You just put it. Yeah, in, you, yeah, you put you the know, handle up your ear. 
to the Joe's berry. not biting. I was trying to get him to understand yeah. the fact that you you put the handle up to your ear, you don't stick the screwdriver yeah. in your ear. Yeah, you didn't yeah, bite yeah. on that one. I was messing ear. with you. Frankie's dying. No, so. no, no. Yeah, it's You're like just ignoring how the, me like my family. How the Indians <laughs> used to know when trains were coming. Oh, you're here. Put their ear to the railroad oh, tracks. Dude, have you guys ever seen the weird, creepy train people that hang out by the train tracks? Yeah, they're or, called they're foamers. And they yeah. are freaking like legit they're called foamers by yes the way. they are and and usually depending on the areas there's i know there's some normal train people but there's also some weird yeah, train I mean, people and i yeah. feel like i've seen the weird ones like, because... i got a i got a little brother who's into trains and i would consider him like one of the normal train people yeah, yeah. and like i'm kind of into trains too because they're cool the history behind them you know they're giant giant freaking machines and they just why look did cool. you move then bro yeah i know right i don't it's like i don't like them that much like i literally lived 10 feet away from one of the busiest I remember train the tracks first time the, the first United time we States. were doing the stream and i'm like what's that fucking noise like yeah. is there a train <laughs> like and i'm like like in what? my house <laughs> yeah oh dude i would have people like almost trespassing on my property at certain times of the year because we had certain trains that would come through my area of the world uh, especially around Christmas, we had the Christmas train that would come down from Canada, loop down around, loop de loop through my neighborhood. And dude, there'd be people, I kid you not, there'd be 20, 30 people in their cars from like the sun up, sunrise, because it was coming, but they didn't know when, usually at eight o'clock at night. Like they'd be there for 12 hours waiting on my property for this stupid train wow. to come flying by for 30 seconds. Now, one thing I will say, I agree trains are cool. I just, I'm kind of making fun of people because there's some weird people that stand there. I realized mm -hmm. also Clive said that sometimes extremely autistic people, I'm not making fun of them, but um, there's just some strange people sometimes oh, yeah. that are at the trains. We stuff. All love but trains. One mind. thing I will say is we have a lot of rail yards near us. Mm -hmm. And if you ever get a chance and you could just go look at the graffiti, that's some yeah, of that stuff cool. pretty intense. I like, agree some of the graffiti as as long as it's not stupid tagging yeah. like the yeah. people that actually put yeah like the, the actual letters it, that look cool yeah. or the pictures that look yeah. cool and it's not just stupid gang tagging it's actual yeah. pictures like some of that stuff is amazing i've watched some youtube videos on the uh, oh you know the other thing too you guys ever i get stuck in some weird youtube rabbit holes where i start following hobos that travel on trains <laughs> yep across yep, the right country well, it's those are random. interesting man yeah. those people are interesting if they're cool so. people yeah if they're just deadbeats or you I've never know, watched youtube yeah, videos right. about hobos traveling the dude country it, you'll you'll find dude you yeah. could youtube youtube has a lot man they don't no money anything. no worries in the world bill no worries no. in the world and they're just living by driving see doesn't that sound like doesn't that sound kind of nice like yeah it I know does, you, gotta, does, right? you gotta struggle for food but like All right Exactly. I told my family if I ever lose my mind and go crazy, I'm gonna become a hobbit in the mountains. Like I'm just right. gonna become that guy that people say, Yeah, there's a dude that lives up there in the mountains. It's gonna be me, like just by myself. Yeah, like, if I could get better at hunting and fishing and living off the land, yeah, I'd be right there with you. I'd build a yeah. house out of wood. And yeah, that, that is mud. my one weakness is I don't think I could skin, kill, cut, and do everything. I could fish. I, know, I could right? like I could do it fish. if I learn how. Like yeah, I'd have to watch you YouTube really videos. And yeah, I feel like there'd true. be a lot of animals where I just fucking kill it and then cut a big old piece of meat off of it and then just and like waste the all the rest of it and then just cook it real quick and eat it and then yeah, yeah I'd be like, like in the woods carcasses. yeah I'd be watching a YouTube video that says all right sneak up on the bear and I'm like okay sneak it up on the bear <laughs> like now shoot the bear and then like the bear's watching me watch this YouTube video as I'm trying to kill it and then it just yeah. ends me you know why I, I never, never watched tv or netflix or anything but one thing i watched lately is the one on netflix i i was it alive now i can't remember what's called that's how much i watch it was the one that there, there's like 20 people in the uh they're actually in, uh were they in canada or then you're talking about the movie alive no they weren't in canada they were in uh the well, freaking alps like they Where? were in the alps and the mm -hmm. the soccer team where the plane crashed in like the 1970s oh, no, 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 no. oh it's not life. Sorry, I screwed up there. This it's the one who just trying to survive, and the last winner who, to stay and not tap ball gets a, like a five hundred thousand. Oh, oh, those are fake, man. You think like that's a, fake? Like one? a loan yeah. and afraid or something? All yeah, I, I got into it. It was pretty cool. <laughs> but guy, guy killing a bear with a with a bow and bow. I don't know, and it's kind of far fetched, but it's pretty hmm. cool. What would you guys yeah. do if you were attacked by bears, or if you ever got in a situation where it's like? Your kids are behind you, and there's a bear in front of you, and that bear just wants to eat you and your kids. Like, what do you Charge do? It. I mean, what it's gonna kill you, so fucking run at it and right. scare the shit out of it. I mean, what run else at do you it. Do? I've thought about this. 
Like I'm going to run at it. I'm going to try to get my whole arm into its throat. Yeah. Good one. And yeah, that's not going to happen though, because it, most of the time it's going to run away from you. But if it is going to get you, it's going to come out with a claw first. And that claw with the right. six inch freaking right. claw things are going to just gut you. But oh, see, that's where my super reflexes will hopefully come. And I'll just like matrix move my way backwards. And you're going to jump then, on top and strangle it. And, and then just then, like put my arm down his throat and like yeah. fist its mouth. Yeah. Honestly, the best thing to do, I think, is when he's coming towards you, fast, go underneath him, flick his balls. Trust me, flick his balls, and he might run away. What if it's a female bear? If it's female, then you're screwed. Yeah, yeah, you're done, dude. If it's a female bear, there's babies nearby, and it's going right. to kill you. Yeah, it will yeah. kill the shit and, out and of Housh you. And Housh did make a good Alone. point. There aren't some bears you're supposed to play dead? Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't. I'm not. I like being in the wilderness, but I don't usually go where. Yeah, I, bears. I've heard that's not really a good thing to do, too. Like, yeah. I think the people that play dead, do you see what happens is like the people who get attacked by bears, they play dead and then they get killed. So when people stumble upon these crime scenes or whatever, they're like, oh, look at all these dead people. Nobody knows that those people were playing dead when the bear killed them because <laughs> they're dead now. What so, about the stupid people that live with bears? And then there's that dude oh, yeah. that lived with the bear and then they never found him and then they found or, his bones or whatever. Or what about the one where they they you know it's the same thing where it was a i don't know husband and a wife or something they lived with these bears like back in the 70s or 80s yeah, yeah. and like just one day the bears are like you know what we just realized you're not really a bear like us and they killed them and like they have all the audio recordings of it yeah so they were doing a killed. documentary series on it and they were filming yeah. everything yeah and then they killed his girlfriend too yeah that was a trip yeah you guys Dude. want to uh address this uh cyber sent a super chat which is awesome cyber thank you what is your opinion on reimbursing when employees buy tools by company does not the company does well not. first and foremost mm. it depends on where you're at so in my area doing commercial work it's pretty common for the contractor to buy all the big ticket items the only thing that i require yeah, my guys to buy is hand tools right a drill and like your gauges okay um, we buy all the big ticket, the vacuum pumps and everything, and we will reimburse them to an extent for their tools that get broken or stolen. Um, we give them a tool allowance, uh, you know, that they have basically that they can use to purchase whatever tools. Um, so it, I think that if so you're good. using a tool on a job, you should be reimbursed. But as a business yeah. owner, the difficult thing is if you buy them every tool, including their hand tools, they don't care if they lose them. So you know, it's, yeah. it's yeah, kind of a, a gamble. That's where I'm at too. They, um, it's basically the same thing. They buy us all our tools except for the hand tools. And so the hand tools that I buy, if I destroy them at work or they get lost or broken at work, then the company will buy me a new, whatever it was. Yeah. They'll replace it for me. So yeah, you're getting screwed cyborg. So <laughs> Howard Sharp says bear versus 45 caliber dude. <laughs> I don't know how much a 45 is going to stop a bear. I mean, if you shot it from a far distance, but a 45 is going to going to kill him eventually once it hits the right vital yeah. organ. You're only going to it's going to you, right? get lost in the fat it's when he's charging you. And right as I think when it's coming to you, you have to do a close. Yeah, 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 but how, how lucky are you going to get shoot right a bear in the head, bro? Yeah, that's the only way. Like you got to get lucky and and get it right in the head. Nice shotgun would be nice. Are you are you really going to be calm and collected and just standing there? getting your aim to shoot a bear in the head you're going to be like freaking shaking running like I yeah i mean you might get that one bear that like gets that that bolt of lightning through it when that bullet goes through it but i think those bears are just like incredible hulk angry smash mode and they're just they're just gonna get you so like cf franco saying nobody in florida buys tools a bunch of jamokes I mean, huh. you know, that, that kind of happens everywhere. We have problems. Oh, I got to tell you guys something. So today, um, I got a phone call from one of my main customers, right? And they had recently just asked me to quote preventative maintenance programs because they haven't been doing PMs for well, a while. Real, real quick, Chris, let's, I want to address a bear this. Push me in my hammock. Okay. Does That's he awesome. mean awesome. a man awesome. in short jean shorts and flannel? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're onto something here, Bill. We're yeah, I think I think I think Dustin had a bear. Mm -hmm. I don't know, he guys. Was, he was probably drinking, and he doesn't remember everything right. about it. So. Like, ooh. Hey, speaking of that, Dustin, you need. I know we kind of talked about it, but we need to get Dustin on the show because I was talking to him a bunch of bunch of stuff in Florida, and I want to get like he was talking about 
because I asked Dustin a serious question about how do you know at what point as contractors and people that kind of know what we're doing do we start educating the customer on what comfort actually is oh and yeah i remember this the, the point about this is you know there's an argument right now and so this is what i want to talk to dustin about but i'm going to talk a little bit but there's an argument right now that a lot of people when you bring up a heat pump they're like no i like a gas furnace because it blows hotter huh. then you really start thinking about it okay if a gas furnace blows hotter you know should the customer be feeling hotter air no, because you shouldn't be feeling the air blow on you, right? Right. So that's their argument. Um, you know, so the question is, at what point do you start educating the consumer on what comfort is? And so I've asked a bunch of people and Dustin was the first person to really give me the answer that I was kind of looking for, because a lot of people are like, yeah, that's a slippery slope. And I agree it is. It's a very slippery slope once you because then you you know, you're starting to change customers things, but Dustin has some really interesting ways that he was cool. telling me how he will tell the customer that they're, that's not comfort and start to explain it. And I want to get him to tell those stories that's on the cool. show. So, yeah, we should have him on. Speaking of um, tools, guys, these days when I he's got, not so busy. I got yeah, one. for sure. I got this little guy. What is, is that? that? Is, like that a, my... is that a Floby? It's not like you're a detector. What the heck? You know, there's, this is totally going to get flagged right now, right? Like, this is going to be I like know. they've got guns. So. It's a vacuum, dude. What? They use it at work for the car, man. And then... Wait, 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 bro. Hold on. Bro. You can put this on, and you can blow things. Okay, turn that thing off, Joe. Okay. It's super loud. Bro, that is a penis pump. <laughs> no, it's like not. like literally they they literally made a penis pump and yeah that's then pretty... they said hey wait this can have a second function and they turned it into a vacuum bro that is literally like a freaking out of the back of the 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 nudie magazine the the advertisements in the back that's what that's from if that's 100%. what this is the thing you have is like the pump 2000 because that thing is extreme this is a leak yeah. detector bro uh, but what are you gonna do with that tiny little blower. vacuum joe um, but yeah, this is I can use it for little calls, like the van. I think it's handy. It's USB, and uh, I'm gonna give it a go. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like I like a battery a powered. Like I used to have a Dewalt. Uh, I have a Milwaukee battery shop vac, battery powered shop vac. Like that was pretty handy just to have. I can grab yeah. it real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna but, try it out. Like little furnaces, boilers on the boards. It has a brush one too. I think it's gonna come in handy. You're gonna use I mean, it. Right on. It seems handy if you ever have a thimble full of dirt tip over. So, uh, Sequest said economics, money talks, heat pumps are more efficient. That's his story. You know, but th that is a slippery slope though, because you know you're talking about people that have had oversized gas furnaces that have been short cycling their for entire years, life, and getting them to put in a heat pump here's the sad story of this all the heat pump thing is going to become a problem and it already is becoming a problem because people are installing heat pumps because of the tax credits you know yeah, and, the and they're literally selling them because of the tax credits and they're not redoing the duct systems and they're already undersized so now it's not going to work in heating season because you're going to go off on high head pressure all the time you know and that's going to become a problem and you know, the old antiquated gas furnaces that they had, you know, they would just cycle and cycle and cycle because they had PSC motors in them, right? So they could run with messed up duct work. And, you know, now that you're going with ECMs and everything, people are really running into problems mm -hmm. and it's creating issues for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's going to be a lot of issues. Yeah, I have the same one, uh, Jason, the Milwaukee one. I love it. The M18, uh, the Paco one. I love it. But for small little things, like even Michael suggested, like the thermostat, dude, this thing, I think it's going to come in handy, man. I don't have to lug yeah. that thing around. Imagine I come to a, a job and I have it on my belt. Yeah, like, you should buy like a gun holster. Yeah, like, that, carry it in a gun holster. Like the, get the kind of gun holster where it's got the strap around your like thigh Dude. too. Yes, Dude. <laughs> Bill. Bill, gun holsters are illegal in Canada. Even the cops don't have gun <laughs> holsters, right. right? Only the specialists have guns. You're right. What? Actually, this. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've seen cops wear them, but I think they're the same ones you use in the machine gun. So I guess they're bro, kind of your like, cops wear gun holsters with no guns in them. Come on. That's true. <laughs> they just carry that gun holster thing. They can put their hand in there and then pull out the finger guns and go. Oh, Thank imagine you. that. I think, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, the UK people in chat, I think they're worse than us, dude. Yeah. Actually, I don't think their are. guns have, their cops have guns. Well, they, they're no. only certain ones do. So okay. I think they just got whistles and clubs. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't <laughs> the second tool I got, guys. Because since we have a little bit more time, five minutes, whatever it is. You went a shopping spree. Yeah, I got a little. I took a plunge and I got the. Uh... Oh, the yeah. power tubing bender thing. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. Have you used it yet? So no one's gonna open it right now, bud. Funny story about that. Okay, so as you're opening it, we'll talk about it. So the funny story is is. There was an accident with that, a mistake that they made in manufacturing uh -oh. that actually became a selling point it with it. I bought it. No, 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 no. It's not a bad thing. Okay, no. Cool. So there's a metal bar on there, and that metal bar was not meant to do what it does. When you retract the bend after you've made it, it comes down and it hits a metal bar and it pops it out of the mandrel. Because if you've ever had ratcheting tubing benders, especially the, the yellow jacket one, it gets stuck in the mandrel. And on the, the plastic mandrels, when you would try to get it off, you'd break it, right? So open it up and show the little metal bar. Greaves told me that story. It was a mistake. They didn't mean for that to do what it did. It was meant for some other purpose. And it just so happens that when you but retract like, it, oh, yeah. it pops it out. So they realize that. Really? You yeah, imagine well, like the board meeting where they have to discuss that and they're like what is that metal bar doing there and they, that's not supposed to be there and like oh no pretty heavy so pretty that heavy. metal bar on the left hand side joe show oh. the show the screen that thing right there that metal piece when when it comes down when you're retracting it the pipe hits that and it pops it out of the mandrel oh i got it that's yeah hmm. okay. but that wasn't its intended purpose i don't remember what Greaves said the actual purpose was for but yeah, okay it was like a, a happy accident okay if Michael I can set this up quickly, says Andrew Greaves needs to come back to YouTube. I I've kind of talked to him about that. I mean, I haven't I didn't I haven't talked to him in a while, but he's a great quarter here. I he's think it's busy quarter. doing other stuff, man. Like he's yeah, just he's busy, busy making millions at Navac. Yeah, thanks he's gotten for the one, he's gotten promoted up and uh, um totally different position now. So it's pretty cool. I pretty will say cool. like that whole story is kind of like I won't say every YouTube. Every YouTube personality dreams of like making it big like that. But I, I think it was pretty cool how that whole thing played out for him. I don't think, I mean, I'm not saying never, but I don't think I would want to go work for a manufacturer. I, no, I, I don't think so. I like fixing things and I love filming. So I yeah. don't know how, but I would love to be able to go fix things, troubleshoot things, but just film it and not have to run a business. That's, that's yeah. what I want to do someday. So. So one of these See. things locked in place. I found the three quarter. I'm assuming that's three quarter. It looks like three quarter old D. Do the, yeah, you gotta make sure you get the right place? ones, and you move oh, yeah, them when you bend it. They move in and out depending on what you're working on. That's weird. Oh. So if you're working on different <laughs> sizes, you got to move them in. On the back, there's like a little push button, and it slides over. That. Yeah. You know they oh, use the same kind of tool like oh, that. Oh yeah, put... it tells you right here, uh, one, two, and three different sizes. This is like the best tool review ever. <laughs> the one, two, and three sizes. So three quarter is number one, actually, which is all the way that way, all the way there. So I have it on right for three quarter. Yeah. See, like I was saying, that's the same kind of tool that they use to put the curve in all the bananas in Colombia. Wait, wait, you guys. I just realized how much Michael. We're not gonna. We're not gonna go into depth, but how much Michael C. M. Fraco belongs in our tight knit fringe group because he says, "Let's get Andrew Greaves fired from Navac so he can start making videos again." <laughs> So, See, that Mike guy, he's not as straight edge as people think. No, so Mike, that just makes me laugh. Not talking Dang. about Greaves, but if you only knew the conversations that we have, that <laughs> that fits right in our conversation. Like behind the scenes. Behind the scenes conversations. Oh. So. There's a power button here, guys. I thought I was dead, but there's a power button on this side. So maybe we got some juice. We do. Woohoo! Oh, going yeah. back. So I'm going to tell you the flaw board. with that. Uh, not yet, man. Let me see if I can figure it I'll out. I'll let you him, figure it out. Let him feel it, happy I have it, for it a works. While. I use it, but there's a flaw. Is there? Okay. Yeah. So I got the three quarter in. All right. Well, we're not going to listen to Joe talk about how he's going to bend something. So, no, you don't have to know. <laughs> you can bend it and show us when it's time. Um, yeah, put a stick in it. See what that happens. See what happens with that. All right. Hold let's on. just let him bend it real quick and we'll get this over with. Put, put yeah. a candy cane in there. This is just, excruciatingly painful. I just want to think of things that you're not supposed to put in there and then put them in there. I hope the thing just breaks. And he's like, oh, no. Okay. That's my mind, I'm sure. Now retract it. Keep going. All the way down. It came out easily. Not 
Not like my yellow jacket. Fucking cranking it, breaking my knuckles to take it out. Yeah, yeah. No kinks. Look at that. No like little dimples. Dude, the kinks doesn't have to do with the bender. It has to do with the copper. The copper. It, yeah, I, I, you're right. Yeah, because I I get kinks with the Navac bender sometimes. Sometimes you don't. It has to do with the copper mm. the temperature of it. True. Absolutely. Sometimes I anneal it, but when I last time I got somebody to anneal it, he melted my plastic yellow jacket thingies. Oh, I've had someone do that too. Yeah, yeah. I have. Like, oh. yes. That. No, you know what? I think I'm gonna like this. It's gonna be fun. I, yep. you know, I'm pretty sure. They can bend all sorts of things. Had it. It is fu money, but. No, FU. here's here. I'm gonna tell you the the one thing you yeah, have to. Yeah, tell me. It's, it's a backwards way you have to figure out because there's no. Nothing on there to tell you where the bend's gonna be. There is. What do you mean where it's gonna be? Like meaning you're measuring, like where it like mark mark a piece of pipe and bend it at the mark. Oh no, no, you have to, you know, no, no. I have to you can't I do that with that. that. You can't bend it at the mark. You can do that no. with a ratcheting bender. Why can't you do it with that? Because uh, there's no mark on the, the ratcheting bender. There's yeah, you a, can. there's an offset, like an inch, three quarter. Yeah, well, you uh the ratcheting bender, you just put it in the sweet spot. I put it right between the two marks and it right. bends it. Right. So Right I mean, when I was using them. my ratcheting bender, I got pretty decent at figuring out where the, the bend was actually going to be. Yeah. I, you know I what they need? It up a little One bit, thing, but... and I realized yeah. the problems with it, but here's the thing. We need uh, an automatic pipe bender for conduit. Oh, that would oh be cool. Oh, my gosh, because using I mean, the damn conduit bender you need to use too much freaking math to do yeah. proper bends with electrical conduit and i don't have the patience to learn the math was it but algebra? if we I had a somehow i realized the problems because some of the stuff you're bending is really big and the the, yeah. the hydraulic power that the tool would have to have would be all downright dangerous to bend some of that mm, crap but yeah. if i just had an, an an automatic emt bender just for yeah. like up to three quarter inch emt dude my life would be so much better than having to run seal tight all the time like just oh be so nice. Alan Honest is saying there is an app for it for the you know algebra or the you know the fractions, whatever to get the for right kind of it. Bend, I'm assuming for the yeah. yeah the I remember it's been having class part. for refrigeration and that went right out the window. Yeah, where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. You got to learn how to use the marks on the benders, but still, it's just if you had a hand bender for electrical conduit, it would be so much easier. Just beep, push oh, yeah. it, even if it was a ratcheting one. But mm -hmm. I realized the the power and the mandrels like it just yeah. doesn't add up. Stuff would break. But yeah, I would love to be proficient in bending conduit and doing offsets and stuff because my crap always when I try to use a bender, it always ends up. Hey, we'll see you, crap. Will. So see you, Will. This better have the reversing friggin' bracket. How do you reverse friggin'? I just realized this have the reversing uh, ninety or. I know mine has a reversing it? thing. I think I had to buy an extra thing. Oh, I for God's it sakes. It. It's just like yeah. the yellow jacket, bro. The yellow jacket, too. You had to buy the extra thing to do the yeah. reverse 90. Yeah, of oh, course. I'm so not everybody, for that, man. Not everybody uses the reverse 90, I guess. So they're like... It's so Tom Letch says that they do make an automatic bender, but is it portable? Or is it... I, I've seen stuff that's on the ground, but I've never seen something portable. Hmm. And House says that he thinks they make hydraulic hand ones. Well, then I need to find them because I don't know that they exist. I mean, yeah, it would make I sense. I never seen something lot, like that on the market. A lot of electricians obviously do, you know, use the handheld. I never seen any of them use yeah. the automatic one. That's pretty cool, dude. I gotta say, when you go on Instagram and watch some of the the big time electricians do legit bending and oh, that bet. is beautiful when yeah, they do they that do it all the time. some of that stuff is insane dude the math that it must take to calculate that yes yes i that that part amazes me like That's i have a hard enough time just like bending regular copper when i used to do a lot of refrigeration like for us it's a little bit you get the offset number and then you could just do like you said two points blah blah, blah. like it's i not, bend it's not, and then i tacky. trim it that's what yeah. I, do. I bend and trim bend and trim yeah but um, the electricians sometimes they gotta line up right into the the panel and then through a hole. Yeah, or like they when they're like they're going up on an angle, then it goes over. But as it's right. going over, it also curves this way. Right. Like just insane. I think the ones you're talking about, the portable ones for the conduit, are they stationary on like at a table, like on a vice? So mechanical environment mm -hmm. says the rims curvo bender. He thinks it might be able to bend conduit because it can do black iron pipe. Damn. Rims is making some interesting stuff. Wow. But the, what I noticed about the rims stuff is that it, it looks like cheap. 
if you ever see like i mean i know it's not cheap their shit's expensive but it just doesn't look like it has bells and whistles is what i mean mm. like you're just like okay that's a bender yeah all right like well, it's just, it's like just this, really so like looks- no their bender doesn't look like but honestly the navac one looks kind of stupid even though i have it it does look pretty dumb but right. the rims one just looks like a handheld press tool and then it just has a little thing and it just bends it you know and but i don't know rims has some other stuff that's interesting but their shit is expensive oh so. is it yeah yeah really expensive well see i'm gonna go to bed with her tonight and see what happens and see how i feel and go from there oh yeah let me know how that works out for you yeah put your wiener in it there's not gonna be anybody there to help you as your brother in town like who's gonna (laughs) save you when you bleed out yeah put your wiener in the opposite way and try to bend the curve out of it okay okay i see where you're going with that straighten out your gonzo wiener yeah sure sure sure. (laughs) but anyways yeah yeah Figured I'll um, use it, but now I'm so bummed that it doesn't have the uh, the like you said the reverse for like the yellow jack I had to get. You're right. So you guys, <laughs> have you Save guys been paying it. attention to freaking um, Ty? Dude, Ty cannot catch a break on social media right now. What's up? <laughs> I mean, just dude, the people in the comments, and I know Ty's having fun with it. Like he's not, he's he's like me. It's you know sometimes the comments bug you, but Ty's just like yeah, I think just he's addressing he's... the ignorance. But it's just insane the amount of stupid people i'm sorry but the amount of stupid people that comment on his stuff they have the most ignorant dumbass comments like someone got mad and, and was yelling at ty and ty made one, one of his passive aggressive reaction videos that make me laugh but he 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 loves addressing the comments and i love that yeah, He'll just do a think, comment and be all super nice and he's like yeah no you're crazy and like, this is a great yeah, opportunity yeah, yeah. I love it when you call me a dipshit because this gives dude. me a time to make another video for you. It's it's absolutely hilarious. But some guy was telling Clive or telling uh, um, Ty, you know, he's like, he was, he was, what did he call? He called Ty like an arrogant asshole or something. Yeah. Really? Like, who in the right God. mind could ever think Ty is an arrogant right. person? Like, right. you know, 100%. I don't, yeah. I don't know all these yeah. people. <laughs> but, you know, like when you're putting yourself out there that much and you're that positive and, people just want to tear you down maybe you know it might not even be specifically because of the content that he's putting out it's just because you know somebody sees somebody so positive and they're just they just want to tear him down yeah you know if if you guys have in the chat if you guys you know we're all talking about the tools and you guys are coming up with ideas throw them in the overtime facebook group and tag us so that way we can see them and then discussion can start about it if you guys have a cool tool that you guys like Throw it in the overtime Facebook group. Tag the four of us, even though Adam's not here because he's a loser and hanging out with his family. Yeah. Um, you know, tag the four of us and then we'll have a conversation. We'll get to check out the cool tools that you guys have. So yeah. I don't have any cool tools. I haven't got any cool tools in a while. And tools oh. like they they cross between trades, right? So if we don't, you know, we could use it for us if it's like a nice condo yeah. event. We'll get, you know, like yeah. we don't know about them. We're but I do people. have to say, some of the manufacturers right now, like I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it, yellow jacket. What the hell are you guys coming out with right now? They just released their very first um, wireless, what is it, a, a anemometer. Oh, but it's got really? a telescoping thing that you stick in the duct so you can traverse the duct. Oh. Dude, mm-hmm. that's from freaking nine years ago. I know. Like, come on. like I, I, in my, I felt bad when I saw it because I was like, that's a stupid tool idea. And then I'm sitting there thinking... Like who at their company? Is there like a sect of the market that still would use that? Let's be honest. If you're traversing ducks, that's one of the most inaccurate ways of getting true airflow. Right. Because in like high stat, right, you have to have like so much planning to traverse a duct. You have to drill a series of holes that are equally spaced apart. You have to stick the anemometer in there. Uh, You have to take a reading at a certain measurement. And then keep the anemometer straight, pull it out, take another reading, another reading, another reading, another reading, and proceed to do that nine other times. Yeah, so that way you can average. get an average velocity. Yeah. And, and then you the do a duct calculation and come up it. with a CFM. Use for a flow, flow hood, a powered flow hood. <laughs> yeah. The thing or is for like flow grid. Well, for commercial, yeah, for that commercial that settings grid. and high static, medium static commercial settings, it's fine, I think. But who does that for commercial, really? If you, nah. you check it for a unit, it's delivering the CFM. Yeah. Or, you see, uh, Ryan. So, uh, yeah, Ty did. He made a video and, and told the guy that you really probably, hey, up, in the nicest way, he said, I really think that you should seek some help. Like he said on the video? That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> well, he wasn't wrong. I mean, no. 
Oh. Some people just get but so worked up. Over I nothing. do have to say, like, the there is more negative comments on TikTok. Even on my TikTok, there's more negative comments. I don't get bombarded with them, but there is, you know, it. some of the comments, you know, sometimes people, they post some silly stuff. I get a kick out of it sometimes when I see people. I love the ones when people tell me that I did something wrong, but I know that I address the fact that I did something wrong at the end of the video, but they didn't watch to the end. So I love mm. to just play with them on like, yeah, okay, cool. Go ahead. And yeah. And, you know, well, can you watch the end of the video? You know? And then they're like, oh shit. Yeah. Like, oh man. That stuff's funny. Um, uh, R134A uh, hole is saying, would you say yellow jacket makes the best hoses? If not, who do you think makes the best hoses? J and B. I mean, I used to swear by yellow jacket hoses. I'm not going to say they're bad, but honestly, I don't think that there's much of a difference between anybody's hoses, any of the major manufacturers. They're all using the same yeah. technology. Um, yellow jacket is not in very many supply houses in my area anymore. They really have kind of cornered themselves and JB is in more supply houses now. So their stuff's getting bought more in my area than yellow jacket stuff. Um, so, but I don't think there's a really big difference in technology and hoses. Um, I'm intrigued by the field piece hoses. I do see them. I don't have them. Um, Smurf boners. No, the smoke. You know what? Actually, when I was at AHR, this is something interesting. Navac came out with their own Smurf boner vacuum hoses. Really? They're not three quarters of an inch thick, though. They're only like five eighths. They're super flexible. Mm. But I, I, I was talking to them, What's and I'm like, thing? hey. Like, why don't you guys come on, like make longer ones, make this, make that. And they were like, yeah, we're not really pushing that right now. I don't think they want to piss off someone or something like that by mm. making hoses, but they, their, their hoses are even more flexible than the true blue. Like what's the, the selling point? What's the catch? Is it the flexibility of them? Is that what they're? Yeah, they're just, I picked them up and they're super lightweight. You don't have a bunch of fittings. They're much more flexible. So they're not using the KF fittings on theirs. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, shit. Yeah, did you know that, Um, like, a lot of people, you see the True Blue, the AccuTools, True Blue hoses or whatever. You know that, like, they they didn't really invent anything except for they painted a KF fi a, 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 a vinyl hose blue. That's really all oh, that really? they did. Yeah, KF hoses have existed in That's industrial so and been used it. in industrial for years. They use them in all kinds of scientific labs. KF is just yeah. the fitting. That fits there over the end of the true blue hose. So all they did was just repurpose. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's still cool they brought it to the HVAC market. But, dude, yeah, I can't cool. keep track of everything that Vito's coming out with. They just keep coming out with so much. I'm just, I'm, I'm lost. Oh, they, There's, didn't they just come out with the, uh, or, or am I just seeing it now, the hose bag? Did they always have that? I don't know what a hose bag is. Restore your, yeah. sorry, refrigeration hoses. That's a nickname for a woman. Do you not keep your hoses on your gauges? You hose bag. Well, if you have extra ones, like for, you know, evacuating and anything, like you have extra hoses around instead of like hanging I keep them more. A, I, I have a giant um, hose holder in the back of my van. Right. And I just, I connect the hoses with two flare Four fittings. Inch. Cool. And then yeah. just hang them on the thing. And they just That's sit there. Well, this is what's a bag. The hose bag a bag now. Like? With some special fittings. It looks neat. I, don't I mean, know. is it just a bag? Me. Like, I don't, I don't. Yeah, it's like a Vito bag. I don't know. It looks cool if you have mm. some extra money. Listen, to Vito, buy. like, call me when Vito makes a wallet, a men's wallet, because that's all I want for them right now. I got, <laughs> I got tool bags. I got little bags for everything else. I just want a Vito wallet. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I, I got one of the Vito backpacks yeah. at the Tactical Awards and I was like, eh. I gave it to Kevin Compass <laughs> as it just wasn't my style. So. Yeah, I don't do backpacks. Yeah, I, don't I like backpacks, but I want a backpack to me is small and lightweight. The Vito backpack weighs freaking 90 pounds. It's it's yeah, heavy. Light, it's guys. not a tool backpack. It's it's meant for everyday carry. It's it's a lot heavier than a normal backpack because it still has a molded bottom to it. Wait, right. like what do you mean everyday carry? Like tools? No. Backpack like this. Vito made a backpack for your laptop. Like oh, not oh, a tool okay. bag, though. It's not okay. meant for tools. It's meant, but it's got a hard bottom base. Well, that seems... So it's like okay, you're gonna take that on an airplane. It's gonna be hard to shove under the seat. Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just not into the really expensive backpack that doesn't have functions like that does and isn't lightweight. I mean, I'm gonna need a new diaper bag soon. So Vito oh. diaper bag. Yes, maybe? We get to send them all kinds of other cool like HVAC related baby stuff. Yeah, HVAC diaper bag. <laughs> yeah, this guy's saying he has those line sets. I believe with that uh, white. 
um, insulation that had a reaction, mm -hmm. that white insulation. It was a Chinese copper or Chinese yeah. insulation or something Chemical like that. reaction, the insulation with yeah. the copper. Yeah. Get rid of them and replace them. They're just going to give you problems, problems, and problems. There was those couple, those few years too, especially. They were horrible. Uh, I forget what yeah. they're called, what brands, but yeah. So, well, you know, when we were talking about Thai and there, I, I, how do I nicely say this? The stupidity is just growing with the A2L refrigerants. And first off, the A2L refrigerants, it's like, I don't know if I've ever expressed this. It's really dumb what is happening and all the crap we got to deal with. But at the same time, as a business owner and as a technician, I'm like, oh, well, it's just something new. We got to right. learn who gives a fuck. Embrace Let's move it. on. Right. Yeah. I agree. Some of the shit's dumb. Like, I agree. If you guys didn't know, you know, refrigerant tanks for A2Ls or recovery tanks for A2Ls. Um, is it the, the refrigerant tanks or the recovery tanks? I think it's both. They have to be stored upright. They can't be sitting in your refrigerant tank holder yes, in your van. Yes, I heard that. Yeah. yeah. They have to be stored upright no because angle. they have yeah. uh, pressure relief valves right. on them and the pressure relief valves can get messed up like i think that's right. dumb but it's yeah. just another mm. thing we got to do and it's another thing we get to charge customers for so i mean i don't I, everybody's getting so heated and so angry and i've even had people in the comments and it's just crazy it's absolutely crazy hey the other thing we didn't get to talk about adam's not here so we're gonna get to we'll let him explain it more adam made a post on linkedin a while back Oh, and it was one of his. Um, it was Did one of his. Uh, nah. Second part continuation. Second part. Just... Started off. Second part. Okay, we're gonna tease it. We're gonna tease it. Okay, yeah, so please. Adam made a post on social media, and a, a person that worked for a really, really popular, really big compressor manufacturer, douchebag, had like the most ignorant comment to say about Adam's HVAC <laughs> school article that he posted. Anyways, we'll let Adam tell the story more. Um, but you think we're gonna remember this? Yeah, we'll remember absolutely. Because yeah, Adam wants to talk about this. But the funny thing is, I'm is ignoring. Adam and I both got direct messages down. from Copeland. Oh, but that's all we're gonna say. That's all we're gonna say. We got direct messages from Copeland, though. So yeah. you gotta wait for Adam to tell the story because it's pretty funny. Let so, me make Michael's a note reaction of this, is saying you guys won't remember. Like, yeah. Uh, it wasn't well, we're not going to go any further, Jonathan, but Jonathan said he was trolling Adam. No. We're going to we're going to go in depth with Adam, but I'll just say that we got a direct message, both him and I from manufacturer. Copeland, we from don't Copeland's know who PR person. OK, from the person that that solves problems. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So it's pretty All crazy. Right. No, we're not boycotting seen Copeland. It. We love their yeah. stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ask Adam about DMs from Copeland. There you go. Write that down, Bill. So mm -hmm. Craig is go, saying Craig. that. That was pretty I'll, funny. I'll put that on my but notes. What else you guys got going on this weekend? Uh, I hope to do nothing. I'm on call. Um, and that's pretty much it. I've been off call for two weeks. Now I'm back on for two weeks. I got weeks. no plans. I got no motivation to make plans. No? No, I'm just going to bum around the house. Like, if my little kid's not being a jerk, I'd like to actually spend some good quality father-daughter time with her, but... Yeah, be an Adam, uh, Bill. Be an Adam. Spend some she's time. been being a jerk lately, man. Like, so, mechanical environments, that's interesting. So, we'll have to see. Maybe we need to talk to uh, Jason Objude again, or even, uh, actually, Ralph from Honeywell has been messaging me that he wants to talk, so... Cool. I'll ask Ralph from Honeywell about their uh, refrigerant tanks and whether or not they can be stored, what the final say is on that one, so... That'll be interesting. Uh, Dustin sounds like he's headed for a very, very exciting, entertaining conference, the ACA conference, ACA convention. So hmm. Bill just makes babies now. Yeah, Bill makes babies. Yeah, That's not on purpose, dog. by the way. <laughs> I will. Uh, I'm going to try to. I will video. Uh, I'll show you our little HVAC um, convention. I'll be going. Someone just told me about it. I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's in a couple weeks. Oh, are you going to hate? Dude, everybody's going to be there. Gary's going to be there. All the different big YouTubers really? in Canada, they're all going to be there. The CMPX show? Is that? Yeah, that sounds familiar. I don't even know that. Like, I've never really. Yeah, probably. Dude, yeah. Every you know, social media creator from up north is going to be there. Even non. Wait, didn't CMPX already happen? 
No, one still do. Yeah, there you go. Keep six. He's my my Canadian compadre. Thank March you. March 30th in Toronto. CFPX. Yeah, yeah. Um, March 30th, Toronto. You got to get a picture of Gary McCready, man. Get a picture, post it in the overtime yeah, Facebook dude. group. Awesome, yeah. dude. I would I would go there just to see the trailer park boys, man. They were gonna be there for <laughs> real. You just laugh. You're just rolling. That would be amazing if they're there. I'd love to go see those guys. I, I could, can you guys just imagine what the Canadian Red Green. convention is like? You're I feel like it. it's a bunch of dudes standing around with their Tim Hortons cups, and they're just kind of milling around, like they're holding hands, they're singing mm. songs. I, I bet be it's a like there. it's a bunch of Craig Migliaccios and Ty Brannemans. That's what <laughs> it's like. Everybody's nice, super nice, super it, smart, just hanging out, all being positive together. There's no trolls. Can can someone tell me, no, is Mike. there, like, is there, because we all know, and I'm not going to name names, but there's some American YouTubers that are kind of assholes, okay? Is there any Canadian YouTubers that are assholes? I like, imagine. Is there? Are there, Is there mean I mean, Canadian people? I don't think Canadians can I be I think mean. there are. I think there's got to be. I mean, look at Joe. That's true. I guess He's kind of a Joe. dick most I, of the I time. didn't even think about that when I asked that question. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't setting that up, but that is pretty funny. <laughs> Anyways. He's like the meanest Canadian I've ever met. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's because I don't think he's Canadian, dude. Yeah, really true. Don't. True. Yep. So, yes, All I right, would be well, going there for sure. I'm just going to be hanging out with the... Uh, um, must be talking about the guy in Texas. No, I don't know. We'll have to talk in private, Dustin. I don't know which one. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know which YouTuber you're talking about. Um but uh, I'm just going to be hanging out. I'm on call, doing some stuff. My family's getting ready to go on like a vacation, so they're all getting oh, packed that's and everything. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, my my two uh, two of the four people in my family are going on some school trip to Europe. I got about so. three hours tomorrow, where I have the house all to myself. Oh, that's my vacation. Like, yeah. Totally all to myself. I don't even know what I'm going to do. I have all these old cartoons that I bought that I want to watch, like the GoBots movie, GoBots and Rock Lords movie. I want to watch that. I want to watch some old Batman stuff. Like, I have so I... much that I want to do that I've been dreaming about doing if I ever get the house to myself. So, you know, it's funny that Adam's not here and, and I start thinking of all these topics and different things that I know he'd love to talk about. But so, see you, Dustin. You guys... Do you guys ever re-watch TV shows that you've watched before? I do. Most of the time, they're horrible. Okay. So, so, but Bill, like, ha have you ever watched, like, a series multiple times? Like, re-watched yes. a series two, three times? Okay. So, not saying that that just absolutely means it, but that is one of the symptoms of, like, severe ADHD and slightly autistic is, um, and they, it could be symptoms of other things, too. It's definitely, like, a neurodivergent thing. But I was reading an article talking about why we watch like a TV series over and over again. And it has something to do with it being predictable. There's no surprises mm. and you can just watch it and veg out. And I do the same thing. I'm watching Sons of Anarchy for the like fourth time, fifth time oh, the whole season over weird. again. And it's like I know everything that's going yeah, on, but see, I can just watch it. Like I'm rewatching the uh, the entire all seven Voyager seasons right now. Mm. I'm right in the middle of that. I tried rewatching some old cartoons like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the 90s. Yeah. I mean, some was, of those are hard. That, that, was, that was hard. That was hard. Like, but oh you know what? God, I, you I, know what I, I was watching a YouTube clip and it kind of got me interested in Star Trek Next Generation again because I grew up mm -hmm. watching that. That's because on my list. I DS9 watched the episode will be next. when, uh, oh, shoot, um, Patrick Stewart's character, Captain Picard. When Captain mm -hmm. Picard. Had to confront Reich. Wait, not Riker. Wait, Riker's first mate, right? Second in command. Second in command, yeah. So um, when he had to confront Riker because Riker had like top secret government stuff where he was involved in a mutiny and all this different. And I'm watching this clip and it's like, I forgot that any of that happened. I want to rewatch that series again. So and I think see, I'm going to start watching next The thing generation. that I like about Star Trek is like they have their dramatic points, but it's, yeah, not, right. it's not super dramatic. It's not crazy. Like... I would watch Game of Thrones and like The Walking Dead before it turned into absolute garbage. Like I would watch that and I would get like anxiety because I would get real deep into the characters and like, oh shit, dude! Like they just killed Glenn and all the you know. Spoiler alert for all you guys that haven't watched it, but you know, I'd like just I couldn't do it no more. I'm like, this is emotionally draining, man. I need to go back to 
like some just calm, cool. Let's get some Briscoe County Junior shows in here, some Voyager, you know, some some good stuff. Some you know what Duck I Tales. can rewatch though? Something that's Duck super Tales. easy and I genuinely will take the chance and watch it is whenever the Andy Griffith shows on. I can oh, sit yeah. down and watch that for hours. Oh, Dukes of Hazard. I love Dukes yep. of Hazard, bro. Yep. And uh what's the other one? Oh, Friends. I watch Friends. I never got into Friends, dude. dude. I was at a different phase in my life where I wasn't doing TV stuff. I was yep. rollerblading and only thing is being I, I can't watch the last episode anymore. Like I kid you not, I, I can't do it. I can't it's watch the cry? last episode. It's yeah. I mean, I don't think I would cry again, but I can't put that past myself. I can't trust myself around the last episode. So I don't watch the last episode. I watched uh, that Baywatch. Baywatch is one that you can't rewatch. It, no. It's just too Those cringy. Show. Yeah, it is I don't too think cringy. I, yeah, I can't. I tried rewatching it, and I'm like, "How did I ever watch this?" The other thing is, if you, how did we watch TVs that were so fuzzy? Mm-hmm. Because if you watch anything from the 80s, it's like my eyes can't see. Yeah, I, think about the curve in the yeah. glass too. You know, oh. trying to watch it from halfway across the room sideways. I remember <laughs> when it was a big deal when our family got a Sony Trinitron TV, which is their fancy Ooh. whatever TV. I don't know. It was like 37 inches and it was like we were ballers like oh my gosh dude yeah no nope i remember when i was a kid did you think that your parents were rich i thought my parents were rich and then one day i came home and i i remember telling my mom something and something that'll never i'd say the same thing to my kids when i i think i came home and i was telling my mom that a friend of ours just bought a quarter of a million dollar house or something like that and this was in like the late 90s and uh she was like anybody can afford a payment and that always stuck with me. Like that made me realize, like when you thought people were doing well, it's like, no, anybody can make a payment. It doesn't necessarily mean because they have some fancy. True, you know, true. Right? So. I mean, I had a little hot dog sandwiches as a kid and like cheese sandwiches and macaroni and cheese. Yeah. And like, yeah, we're not rich. I thought we were, but we weren't. <laughs> I learned early on. Like, nope. Nope. No. All right. Well, let's wrap yep. this up. It's been a good show. Yeah. It's a bummer. Adam Hit the like button. button. I'm going to get off camera and go finish touching myself for the rest of the